Okay, welcome to another installment of Adventures in Silver, the playlist which seems to be growing the fastest now. <coughs> You'll have to excuse me, I have a slight cough. <clears throat> I'm working on that. I know that that's irritating some of you, but getting that out of the way, let's, let's do the preface. All investment entails some amount of risk. Never invest that which you are not willing to lose. In other words, don't take the grocery money or the cow and trade them for some magic beans, if you catch my meaning. That being said, look at this chart. Look at this chart. This is what happened during President's Day. The blue is a little bit of trading that started Sunday evening. The red is the trading that went through President's Day, and the green is the trading that's going on right now. As you know, the American markets were closed during President's Day, at least as far as I know. That's what I've been told. But look at what happened to the value of silver. Going into this, silver was trading right at 13, uh, sorry, 15, 75 or, or higher an ounce. And just look at what happened. The minute the market opened, there was an immediate fall off. It went a little while, and then there was a huge fall off. This was like somebody flipped a switch. The only thing I can think of, there's no way that any room full of trading employees or people trading on a floor could have affected such a drop at such a speed. I believe this is a larger entity unloading a lot of silver or unloading a lot of paper. And uh, looking at it down there at the bottom, I think what they were doing, and they haven't fully taken advantage of it, is they wanted to get them a little more by the panic sell-off that would follow that. You see it drops almost straight down. This is on the blue line. And then it rebounds a tiny bit. There's a little bump up at the end of that lever pull but there's some panic selling still going on some of the flip monkeys flipped out and panic sold right there and then it came back up a little bit and it came back up a little bit and eventually it kinda held and you can see where there's a little bit of up and down trading and then all of a sudden it dropped again and it dropped pretty hard I'm not sure that's a manipulation so much as that's more people who just woke up and started panic selling again. And they saw the market was that low, they probably thought it was going to keep on going. And they would have been right considering some of the things. So it goes on, the market rebounds a little bit. I'm sure whoever did all that short selling picked up some good cheap, uh, cheap silver there. But then it comes up a little bit. And right in the middle of where the, the NYMEX would be trading, you see another straight line decline. Just boom, down again, like somebody pulled a lever. So there was some dumping of assets into the pool there. And it did rebound a little bit, and it came back. And then here is where the market is closed. That straight line on the red line, that, that straight level, that's where the market was closed for the day. Trading was closed. And then we have the open up toward the end of the day. This is beginning trading for the next day for them. You know, I don't know exactly. Yeah. That is when the uh, New York Globex opens. But this is basically the beginning. If you look at the Sunday line, they all start at about that time each day. That's the next business day. And you see a little bit of drop-off. And then you have this almost 45-degree decline. It's a wavy decline. That could be some human selling. That is the kind of sell-off I would look for if humans were selling. You know, that kind of angle. And it goes down. It bottoms out. And then it starts back up and into the current calendar day for us here anyway and you can see the gradual climb up now here's an interesting thing the market is recovering nicely then you get to the open of the London market 
All of a sudden, it goes boom, back down like somebody flipped the switch. Could that be the price fix? Did the price fix, quote unquote, break again? Just didn't break as hard, you know? I'm just wondering. Because immediately, that downward spike, the, the market climbs back up. It has one little pause, and then it climbs on back up. And it looks like, as it trades on and on through the day, and this is an earlier chart. I haven't seen the chart yet, currently. But on the green line, you can see it looks like it's pretty much stabilizing. And it looks like that's how our day is going to hold. It looks like we're going to be trading it around 13.35 for the day. And for, you know, however long they decide that's where we're going to trade, you know. But what I see here, that first one on the blue line and then where it's sitting now. Those are opportunities for a stacker. When you see a spike drop like that, silver just got cheap. Silver just got cheap. And if you're holding it for the long haul, if you're one of those stackers that isn't a flip monkey, and you actually hold on to your assets, that's, that's a good opportunity. And then on the red line here where it dips, if I'd have had some extra change to throw at it, I'd have bought some silver down at the bottom of that blue line. You should never buy it super expensive if you can help it. Take advantage of the little spikes downward. Though the big wigs are manipulating the market, the little guy can take very good advantage of their manipulations. Because while the market is spiked down, you can get it cheap. So this is by far, for the long-term investor, the person who's just holding silver and, and you know, for whatever reason you may have, this is a good chance to buy when it's cheap. You know, never take advantage. How should I say? Never waste a good crisis. So yeah, right now, if I kind of had a crystal ball and I knew, and and I also know, I kind of know where it's going because I know that supply is not meeting demand. Eventually. Supply and demand are going to catch up with each other, and the price is going to go up. At these costs, it's very hard to mine for a profit. And so a lot of mines are suspending operations, and they're waiting for the price to come back up before they start up again. The little mines, the big ones that do other metals, silver is a freebie they get along the side of it, you know. And, you know, that puts a little in their coffers. But for the hardcore silver miners, this is a this is a horrible picture what you're looking at right now. It costs money to dig all that out of the ground. It costs manpower, you gotta pay those men. It costs equipment, you gotta replace drilling equipment, you gotta repair equipment. So those little mines, they have to sit off and they have to uh you know, they have to just wait it out. But what that's gonna do, the capacity coming out of the ground is shrunk as a result of that, you know. And the only reason I think that the market is where it is right now is, is the sheer volume of fake paper silver that's being traded on it. But anyway, this is the chart I wanted to show you all, and, and I just wanted to give you all some of my opinions about it. I can tell you right now, if I was a flip monkey and I, I sold high and, and bought low, you know, and I just pulled the levers back and forth depending on where the charts go this would scare the hell out of me right now especially if I bought high like uh, before this weekend when it was way on up there anybody that bought way on up there if you were buying it to flipping it you're hurting right now no if, if you're buying it to hold it you understand something about the value of the metal not so much where the money goes but where the metal goes so would I would I buy right now and hold? Yeah, I'd have even bought. I would have bought it maybe fifteen seventy because I do believe silver is going to climb. It inevitably will, as supply does not meet demand. Demand is going to outstrip supply. I mean, <coughs> this cost even with industry buying the silver, um, supply is not going to meet demand at some point especially with the sheer number of investors that are that are also putting their money into this. And uh, that's just the way it goes. I mean, there are several reasons why people stack, but I'm one of the ones that's in it for the long haul, so really I'm not so 
I'm not so swayed by these little weekend ups and downs, you know. I'm just, I'm holding that as an emergency form of wealth. So, but your reasons may be different than mine. Also holding pure silver, you can take that, you can take at least one piece, cut it into electrodes, you can make colloidal silver out of it, which you can use for a wide range of antibacterial applications. You know, there's there's a lot of things you can do with it, not just use it as money. I mean, depending on your skill set and what you can do with it, you know. What you know how to do with it. Um, silver and electronics is also very useful. If you have a way to uh, convert it into a solder base, you have highly con highly conductive metal there, the highest conductor, circuit traces. You know, put that on circuit boards or use it to solder. Any place, you can use it as pads on contacts that have to operate over and over and over again, thousands and thousands or even millions of times. Where it's got to work, and it has to work right every time, that's where you put silver. You know, silver is used in solar panels. It's used as a little thin, spidery traces over the, surf, over the surface of uh, polycrystalline and monocrystalline solar cells to get the electricity off of the silicon. You know, you have to have a way to get it to a terminal. <coughs> Best conductor in the world, <clears throat> short of supercooled stuff. So a lot of uses for it, not just uh, monetary. And I don't care what banks say. Silver is a monetary metal, and so is gold, and it'll go back that way at some point. You know, do your research. You're going to find out some stuff. Silver and gold has been monetary since before Christ. <laughs> Quite a bit before Christ. Since we've been able to refine it, basically, it has uh, fulfilled a monetary role. Its scarcity and its intrinsic value because of certain things It'll always be traded as money. But getting back to this chart, I do think in these areas where you see these tremendous downturns, and fast downturns, one man can push a button only so many times a second. One man can only register a trade at so many fractions of a second. You know, the only other thing this could be is there's a computer, you know, it could be high frequency trade, this could be computers set to do this kind of thing, but uh, I don't know. I mean, it almost looks like, like what they did when the uh, silver fix was damaged, this huge one especially, when the silver fix was brought so low that it, it made people freak out. To see these straight line spikes how fast can you push a trade button? How, how fast can you make a trade? You know, just you. And then multiply that by how fast can t 10 people make a trade? That shift is a huge volume of material moving on the market. That's not like a few nickels and dimes. That's probably millions of ounces moving around there, if not tens of millions. So it's kind of like... Uh, when your cell provider accuses you of sending so many messages a second, you look at the guy behind the counter and say, how many messages do you think I can type a second with that little touch screen? It's just not possible. And these little spikes, it's not possible. How many people are on a trading floor? How many of them would have to make trades at one time to move that much? You, you, you get it. I'm overstressing it, but... That's all I wanted to say. It's, it's a very interesting chart, and it is still going on. I'd like to see if the market actually rebounds much, or if they're going to hammer it again before the day is over, before the markets close. You know, <clears throat> The New York spot price is still being defined as we speak. But uh, I do believe that there's no coincidence that that downward spike coincides with the opening of the London market on the green line. You have no doubt. So anyway, I will let you guys go. And this is pretty much my video. I'm sorry that it's audio only and you don't have a talking head today, but I've got this big pimple on my nose, and I know that's all anybody will watch throughout the entire video as I'm talking. 
See y'all have a good one.